This is Joseph Fasano, and welcome to the American Poem. In July of 1959, Robert Lowell wrote to Elizabeth Bishop after a stay in McLean Hospital in Boston, where he had been treated for a manic episode. I spent a mad month, he wrote, rewriting everything in my three books. Lowell was a great reviser, a poet who both celebrated and feared, as Eliot's proof rock celebrated and feared, that in a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse. Bishop and Lowell were both shaped deeply by their friendship, and the quality and depth of their letters to one another leave us wondering what will be lost if writers drift away from long-form epistolary relationships. The long letter has always been a space in which writers feel out their ideas, anxieties, and styles. In one of the most well-known of literary letters, the great Rilke writes to the young poet who has asked for advice in life and art. Of course, he writes, you must know that every letter of yours will always give me pleasure, and you must be indulgent with the answer, which will perhaps often leave you empty-handed. For ultimately, and precisely in the deepest and most important matters, we are unspeakably alone. And many things must happen. Many things must go right. A whole constellation of events must be fulfilled for one human being to successfully advise or help another. North Haven, in memoriam, Robert Lowell, by Elizabeth Bishop. I can make out the rigging of a schooner a mile off. I can count the new cones on the spruce. It is so still, the pale bay wears a milky skin, the sky no clouds, except for one long carded horse's tail. The islands haven't shifted since last summer, even if I like to pretend they have, drifting in a dreamy sort of way, a little north, a little south or sidewise and that they're free within the blue frontiers of bay. This month, our favorite one is full of flowers, buttercups, red clover, purple vetch, hawkweed still burning, daisies pied, eye bright, the fragrant bed straws, incandescent stars, and more returned to paint the meadows with delight. The goldfinches are back, or others like them, and the white-throated sparrow's five-note song, pleading and pleading, brings tears to the eyes. Nature repeats herself, or almost does. Repeat, 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 revise, revise, revise. Years ago, you told me it was here, in 1932, you first discovered girls and learned to sail and learned to kiss. You had such fun, you said, that classic summer. Fun, it always seemed to leave you at a loss. You left North Haven, anchored in its rock, afloat in mystic blue, and now you've left for good. You can't derange or rearrange your poems again, but the sparrows can their song. The words won't change again. Sad friend, you cannot change.